Glory to God. To God be all the glory. To God be all the glory. To God be all the glory. Good morning to each and every one of you. Hallelujah. That song was talking about waiting on the Lord. It's talking about waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord is one of the most powerful things that we can do as believers. There's so many blessings. I'm talking about blessings. See, when the world thinks of blessings, they sometimes think of tangible things, cars, houses, jobs, marriages. Those things are great. But when you look in the Bible, if you just do a search, when it's man, blessed is the man, and read about all the different things that are blessing. Oh, my gosh. God doesn't think like we do. I'm not saying those things aren't great, but even waiting is a blessing. Let's look at Proverbs 8, 34 through 35. I know we're talking about vision. We're talking about prophetic vision. We're in a series. We're in part three of a series talking about prophetic vision, talking about vision, God vision, prophetic vision. Vision setting should be of the Lord. Goal setting should be of the Lord. We want God goals, not personal goals. Because our personal goal can be the wrong goals. Oh, we're talking about prophetic vision. I put that word prophetic, which means it comes from God. It's revelatory. As you sit and as you wait on the Lord, the visions become clear. So in Proverbs 8, 34 through 35, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 34 through 35, it says, blessed, blessed is the man that heareth me. So hearing, do you know everybody doesn't hear God? It says, blessed is the man that heareth me. And in the context of Proverbs chapter eight, it's talking about wisdom. You can apply this to vision. You can apply this to the words of the Lord. You can um, apply this to everything that's revelatory that comes from God. He says, blessed the man that heareth me. But then it has a comma. And then it begins to tell you how you hear him, a key for hearing him. And last week we talk, talked about waiting is a key for receiving vision or just hearing God. It says, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. For whoso findeth me, findeth life. Again, when he's talking about me, this is a context of wisdom, but this can be applied to vision as well. It says, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. So strategies come, wisdom comes, instruction comes, guidance comes. What? As you sit, as we sit and wait upon the Lord. God tells us, in the scripture, we get a, a, an answer, a solution, a remedy for everything. How do I hear from God? How do I see God's vision for my life? Wait on the Lord. That's what the psalmist was singing about waiting. I will wait on you. I will in your presence. I mean, I'm not a psalmist, but that's what the words were. Waiting on God. So I declare that we have the capability, the patience. One, remember I talked about this, one of the gifts of the spirit to wait on God, to see his vision for our life, his vision for our family, our community, our works, our assignments. I'm gonna keep speaking that over you, <laughs> that you will see as you wait. You will see as you wait. And the more you wait, oh, this is good right here. The more you wait, the clearer you see. The more you wait, the clearer you see. The more you wait, the better you discern. The more you wait. And I love it in Proverbs 8, 34 through 35. It tells you how often do you wait. It says waiting daily. That means every single day you ought to practice waiting on the Lord. And I talked about this before, waiting, you're being still and you're listening attentively to God in his presence, not praying. We spent an hour, which we do every Sunday, 
praying. We were literally doing all of the talking. This is just because of the service and we're not waiting on the Lord. But in your personal life, that's what you need to be doing. You need to set aside a time where you just sit and wait. And it's powerful. It's powerful. So God just wanted me to remind you that that's your key for you to get your prophetic vision. Cross out our visions. We want God's visions because God's visions are the ones that's going to come to pass. God's visions are the ones that he's going to um, finance. God's visions are the ones where he's going to give you the grace to complete the work because without his grace, you are not going to be able to complete those assignments. You're going to get weary in well-doing, but when he's in it, when he's in the mess, he's going to anoint you. He's going to fortify you. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to empower you, empower you. He gives you everything that you need to fulfill your God ordained vision. So I need to emphasize that and keep emphasizing that the center is Christ. The center is God. The center is not me. It's not a self-centered vision. Hear me. We don't want self-centered visions. We want God visions. Amen. So let me recap what we were talking about. God, God Almighty, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that we have yielding hearts. We have submissive hearts. We thank you, Lord, that you give us the grace to wait. You give us the desire to wait, to know and to see what you want to reveal to us. We will receive it in Jesus' name. I will wait on the Lord. I will wait on the Lord. Let's go to Habakkuk 2, because this is what we've been talking about. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. It says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. I want you to look at these, I will, I will stand, I will watch. That means I'm making a conscious decision that this is what I'm going to do. We have to make the right decisions if we want to see outcome in our life. So we can follow the model of the prophet Habakkuk. He says, I will do these things. You know what? We have options. We have um, opportunities every single day of how we spend our time. But he says, I will stand upon my watch and I will watch to see what he will say. So we're going to make a decision. If you've already made this decision and you have been waiting in years before, then I encourage you to wait more. If you haven't been, then I encourage you to begin waiting on the Lord. Make it a daily practice. And the more you wait, tell, let me tell you, the easier it becomes. And if you have trouble, if it's difficult for you, pray and ask the Holy Spirit to help you. See, the Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. You can ask God, but do you know that the answer may be, okay, you asking for wisdom. Now I'm giving you the strategies on how to get wisdom. They that wait. <laughs> As you wait, wisdom will come. As you wait. So God doesn't always just give us what we need instantaneously. Sometimes he says, I need you to wait. Because do you know that wisdom is the most highest thing that we can acquire in life. Read Proverbs 4. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is a treasure. Wisdom is a jewel. So God's just not throwing out wisdom just in and everywhere. Sometimes you have to seek it because it's a treasure. It's far above rubies. <laughs> it's more than silver, than gold. Read Proverbs 8 and 4. Read Proverbs chapter eight, read Proverbs chapter four. It talks about wisdom and all that wisdom is. So glory to God. So we're talking about um, in part three, why is it important to write the vision? And we went through five, four of them last week. I'm going to just state what they are and then I'm going to move on to number five and six today. So why is it important to write the vision? We talked about number one, because God said to. Number two, why is it important to write the vision? Because vision becomes clearer as you write it. Number three, why is it important to write the vision? Because we learned that another definition, if you do a word study, right, look up the words, another definition 
of write means to decree. So as you're writing the vision, you are declaring the vision. Each time you write the vision, you are declaring the vision. So vision, when a declaration doesn't always have to be verbal. It can be written. You write decrees. Glory to God. Number four, why is it important to write the vision? We talked about they that read the vision can run with it. Not just men, but angels. Angels see and read visions. So it's important to write them just not for man, but for divine beings. We talked about that last week. So I want to focus on number five. This is another important reason why you want to write the vision. These sound so simple when you really think about them, but do we do them? <laughs> you can read it. Why is it important to write the vision? So you can read it. If I have this concept, if I have this, this revealed sight that God has opened up to me, it's in my sight, it's in my head, but I need to put it on paper. So what? So that I can read it, so that I can rehearse it, so I can meditate on it. Have you ever been in a conversation or with someone either in your natural life or your spiritual life in church? in a gathering, in a teaching, in, you know, online, in person, and, or God says something to you, and then afterwards, you forget what was said next week, two years, three, you forget, but if you take the time to write it down, now you're able to read it, and God began to show me people in the Bible that reference written things. Who's our greatest example setter? Jesus. Well, when Jesus in Matthew 4, when he was being tempted, what did he repeatedly say when the enemy came upon him to tempt him each and every time? He started each response, each reply. He said what? It is written. Jesus himself said it is written. So that means Jesus has been reading what was revealed, what was spoken. So if Jesus, who's our greatest example setter, does it, why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't we? Sometimes it may, may not be convenient for you to write it, but it's important. <laughs> Everything in this Christian walk is not always about being convenient for us. <laughs> so you want to read it. You want to be able to read it. So I'm able to read it when I write the vision, okay? So this is important. And then even what God wants me to remind you also is if you look at um, Abraham, Let's look at Romans chapter four, verse 17, because I'm teaching today because I want us to really understand that when we talk about it is written, if you go through the Bible and just do a search, it is written, you will be so amazed at how much times it says it is written. So it's an indication that it's something that we should be doing is writing things down, writing visions, especially because that's what we're talking about, talking about prophetic vision. Romans 4, 17 it says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Well, that's a decree. That's a promise that God has spoken to Abraham. But he's telling us, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. What is God saying about you? What has God decreed over your life? Do you know these things? But as we sit, as we wait, they become revealed unto us. And it says, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. So God wants you to know that there are decrees for everyone's life. That's why I'm very adamant when I say prophetic decrees. I'm talking about decrees that come from the heart of God, not the mind of man. I must say that and I'm going to say it again. Prophetic decrees come from the heart of God. What is God saying? Not the will of man, meaning not what I just want to happen in my life. So pay attention when, 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 when we're speaking um, confessions and faith-filled words according to my profession of my faith versus a prophetic decree that came from the mouth of God. 
Those are two different things. But God wants you to know that there are prophetic decrees for each and every one of our life. And where are they found? And he started talking to me about the volume of the book, the volume of the book. In Hebrews 10, 7, even Jesus, like I'm going to talk about Jesus because Jesus, again, is the center. Jesus, he said, I come in the volume of the book, which is written of me. Listen, Jesus himself says, I have come in the volume of the book, which is written of me. So this is another scripture reference that's showing that there are books written of us. A lot of times when we hear the book that's in heaven, we think of the book of life, meaning my name is written in the book of life. That's a, that's a good book because we want our names written in heaven. That's in Luke 10, 19. It talks about um, don't rejoice that the spirits are subject unto you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. But I'm going beyond just my name being written in heaven. I'm talking about the prophetic decrees, the words, the oracles of God about you. Well, they're in the volume of your book. And God says, now you need to begin to read the volumes of the book that are written about you. Each and every one of us has a volume of book. What's volume? Look it up. Glory to God. Thank God for dictionaries. Volume means the property of something that is great in magnitude. So that means there are great in number, a magnitude of things that God has said about me, has said about you, but do you know them? Are you reading your books? Do you know what's in your books? Do you know the language, the communication that God has spoken about your life? Well, he's saying they're in the volume of the book. He's saying that in the volume of the book are written decrees about you. So we need to find our books. And how do we find them? He's given us the key. That's what we've been talking about, waiting. So as you wait, you begin to get prophetic vision and sight of the prophetic degree, decrees that are written about your life. That is amazing to me. Because you know what? I'm not smart enough. I'm not wise enough to know what I need to be doing in life. Because why? I didn't create myself. God created me. He knows everything about me. He knows the number of my hands. He knows what I'm going to do in the next two seconds. He don't know what I'm going to say. But I need to be in alignment with God in all of my endeavors. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So um, what God wants you to also know is that, okay, well, Lord, how do I, how do I, find my books. When we talk, one was waiting on the Lord. Another way he told me how you find your books, how you're able to read your books. He said, when you read the book, you begin to see the book written about you. So what he's saying is when you read the Bible, when you take time, I call it like you're just exhaustive in the word. He's saying the more you see the book, meaning the holy book, which is mean the Bible, the more you see that book, you will see your personal books. So that tells me, see, I do self-evaluations. Okay, God, then that means I need to spend more time in the word so that I can see my prophetic vision that you have for my life. And then he began to tell me that these books if you look through the scriptures, um, sometimes it'll say the volume of the books, but sometimes it talks about scrolls in heaven. So there are scrolls in heaven written about me and you, written about your community. Everything in life, there's a written book about it. Glory to God. But they're guarded by angels of light and revelation. So that means there's a seal around these visions and these prophetic, they're hidden from man. They're hidden from the demonic realm. There's angels, there's, there's actual different types of angels, but I'm talking specifically about watchmen angels that guard scrolls, that guard revelation, that guard um, information. Do you know that there's a war because the gates of hell, we talked about this before too, but I'm just reminding us of how all these things come together. When Jesus asked them, 
um, who do men say that I am? And Peter said that you are the Christ. And he said, flesh and blood has not revealed that unto you, but my father. And then he began to say, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. There is a war against you getting your prophetic decrees about your life. The enemy does not want you to be able to see and to know and let alone operate and flow in it. But the first key, I can't operate and flow in it until unless I see it. So there's literally wars going on all the time non-stop to keep your eyes blinded so you can't see to keep you so busy that you cannot be still and hear and see what God wants you to do because when you fulfill your mission it brings glory to God when you fill your works your assignments it brings glory to God it establishes the kingdom it advances the kingdom do you understand every time? That's why we ought to be celebrating and encouraging and in lifting everyone up because each time one of us fulfills our works and our assignment, it brings glory to not just God, but it advances the kingdom of God. It destroys the works of the enemy. Come on. We are not an island to ourselves. We're not here just to get me, mine, and my families. We are here to conquer and dominate and rule and reign. The Bible says thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We want the blueprints of heaven. We want the visions of heaven to be implemented in the life, in the life, in, in life form here on earth. That means I want each and every single body in the world to fulfill their purpose. Every problem that's in this world, don't you know God created somebody and some bodies with the solution and the answer. But if people don't sit and be still and wait for the Lord, they won't know what they're supposed to be doing. We got gaps here. We got gaps there. But this person was created to solve that problem. See, 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 see the visions of the Lord. I declare you'll see the visions of the Lord. I declare you will wait to see the visions of the Lord. You are an answer. You are an answer and a solution to people, to places to communities, to generations, hallelujah. Your blueprints, see your blueprints, see the blueprints of heaven, begin to see them, begin to imagine them according to the word of God, just sit and wait. Good God Almighty, I see it, God. I see it, you're working, you're working, you're working, you're working. I will wait, I will wait upon my watch. I will wait to see what it is that you wanna to do today, hallelujah. That's what God told me, he gave me a revelation. He says, when, he, when the Bible says, give me this day my daily bread, don't you know that that's revelation? Revelation. That's not the logos. That means God wants you to come before him every single day and see what the earth needs today. Because what the earth needs today, which is today, January 8th, it may not, it may not need it January 9th, January 10th. Every day we ought to be waiting before the Lord so that I know what, so I know what earth needs. So as you begin to sit before him, you'll begin to ascend into the hill of the Lord and you'll begin to see what the earth needs. And that's what you pray. Ah, what does my family need today, God? What do I need today? Show me my prophetic vision for today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that your word is cutting. We thank you, God, that your word is piercing. God, we thank you that your word is directing our steps, God, that we are visionaries of the Lord. We are visionaries of the Lord, goal setters of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, shot ba da ba ha. God says, you want to see, I'll show you. God says, you want to see, I will show you. I will show you. I will show you. I will show you. Ah, shout out, whoa, shout out, now, wait, wait, wait on me and I will show you. I will show you. I, God, will show you. I just want to thank God for showing. Lord, I just want to pause and thank you for showing. I want to pause and thank you, God, for revealing. Pulling back the curtains, Lord, revealing to us what you want to show us. Oh. oh, every work is accomplished in him. Every work is fulfilled in him. 
You will fulfill every work. Huh? The works of your hands are blessed, God says. The works of your hands are blessed as you stay in me. Huh? Oh, there's no good thing I will withhold from you. The planting of the Lord. God is planting some of you. God is establishing some of you in the earth, meaning you are now becoming rooted, which means you're being planted, which means this world, these systems, huh? anything that's opposing you will not be able to move you. You're anchored in the Lord. Because he wants to bring provision through your hands. He wants to bring provision through your hands. See, there's a provisionary, provisionary visions that God wants to reveal that will bring provision to the earth. Who would not want to receive a provision from the Lord? Insight from the Lord regarding provision for the earth so that the earth won't be famine, that the earth won't be lacking in resources of what God wants to implement. See, I'm very careful what God wants to implement. Ah, whole shot. We need a God change. We need a God change in the earth. We need a God revolution in the earth. We need a God transformation. And they come through the revealing of visions. Come on, visionaries. Ha. Huh? See, visionaries wait. Visionaries know how to wait on the Lord. Visionaries are not too busy to take time out of the. See, that's part of a job, a part of an occupation, a job duty. I'm just, I'm just giving you natural terms, but it's not like a duty as in it's arduous. But it's like if, if you're looking at a resume, one of the job descriptions of a visionary is their waiters, their watchers. They have the patience and the diligence to wait. Not everybody has that. Some people can't sit five minutes without having to do something. But the grace of God is upon you to wait. I pray God will arrest you to wait because it's that important. It's that important that God's visions be fulfilled in the earth. Jesus. God, we thank you. We thank you for imprinting them on our heart, engraving them on our heart, and we'll set them forever before our eyes in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. Number six, let me tell you why it's important to write the vision. Let's look at, we're in Habakkuk chapter two, verse three. It says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So what God wants me to share with you, which he shared with me, when it says it shall speak, he's saying vision speak. So we know that God speaks so many different ways through his word, through people, through prophets, through our senses. He wants you to know this is another reason why it's important to write your vision, because when you write your vision and then as you read it, it begins to speak to you. Your vision speaks. Your vision has a voice. Your vision has something to say. Your vision will begin to speak words. Your vision will, will, will begin to illustrate, demonstrate to you things in life, in the spiritual realm, that what is to come in your life. Your vision will begin to speak to you and show you, oh, this is how you do it. You'll begin to see yourself doing things like what? God will begin to begin to give you flashes and previews of you doing something. You'd be like, oh, who is that? Let me tell you, sometimes in visions, they're literal and you see yourself, but sometimes visions, they're other people, but they represent things. So God will use visions. They can symbolize people in the Bible, 
of the works and the visions that God had them to do. Or it could be someone in the natural. It can be a, a natural man, or it could be a spiritual person or a natural person. So it's important. So that's how you're understanding and interpreting your visions. Excuse me, your visions will come. But most visions, when you see a vision, most visions are literal. But if he's speaking to you through a dream, then dreams are more symbolic. So like, for example, when I would see or hear about Joseph, well, Joseph in the Bible, he was, excuse me, J J Joshua, he was a leader. And what did he do? He took people from one place to the other, right? So, or it was uh, another person, Joshua, that I knew personally in ministry, that that person God used them in the gifts of healing. So God began to speak to me, not only are you a leader, but about gifts of healing. So what I'm saying to you is you'll begin to see actions or God may allow you to see visionary words because not all visions are pictures. It could be like little, you know, words, right? But however he comes to you, these visions will begin to speak to you. <laughs> your visions will give you your next steps. Your vision would tell you, this is what I need you to do next. It's a preview of what's to come. You'll see yourself. And what does that do? Because then when you're in that place, you've already seen the work accomplished. Oh, I've been here. Oh, I've seen this. It's like, well, how do you do that? Because I've been doing it. I've been doing it in my, in my prayer life because I've already seen it. I've already been acting it out. That's why vision is so powerful because vision also, it's not in my nose. It gives you confidence. It'll give you confidence. It'll reassure you because then you're like going through your daily life and then God will show you, shh, you remember that vision? Or as you're talking to someone, shh, that vision will just, he'll bring it back to you. It'll be like a memory recall. You're like, oh yeah, I know what to do because God already showed me. It helps you. It helps navigate you. It helps establish your ways and show you the ways of the Lord. Gosh, Jesus. Vision is powerful. Vision is powerful. Vision, we talked about what vision would do. It'll keep your mind. It'll keep your focus. It'll keep you from being distracted. That ain't in line with the vision. So move it out the way. No, nope, that's not in line with the vision. No, it'll keep you on a straight and narrow path. Glory to God. So visions, remember, where are visions? Where are visions? Visions are in heaven. What are visions? They come where? In the volume of the book. Visions, they are scrolls in heaven. And how do they come down? Through waiting. So what do we do? We practice waiting. We will practice waiting on the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let me see what else I have here on my notes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. The visions are what will speak back to you. As you begin to ask questions about your vision, well, Lord, well, how do I do that? Well, well where is that going to come from? What did it, what did it, did it, what, who, what, when, why? As you start making inquiries, as you take time, because I said this before, asking questions is a form of seeking. And the Bible says, Ask, seek, and knock. You seek and you will find. So as you keep seeking, as you keep putting those questions before the Lord, making inquiries, God saying your vision will respond to you. Your vision will speak to you. <laughs> but the question is, are you giving attention to your vision? Are you attending to your vision? Are you rehearsing your vision? Are you going back and reading your vision? Are you praying over your vision? Are you putting your vision before the Lord? Are you prophesying your vision? Keep your vision before you. Your vision, we talked about this, will keep you, will sustain you, will motivate you. Your vision, your God-ordained vision. Ah, shorty, ah, Seek and you shall find is a promise. <laughs> Seekers are finders. I'm a finder. How do you find that? How did you find that? How did you know that? Where did that come from? I'm a seeker. I'm a seeker. I'm a life 
long seeker of God, the things of God. And when you do that, you become knowledgeable about the things of God. God says you find all kinds of treasures and obtain them for their betterment, advancement. Oh, shoot, Jesus. Oh, my gosh. Isn't it great to be in a place where you just know things? Oh, yeah, I know how to do that. I know how to do that. It just comes. Why? Because I'm a seeker. It's a reward. That's one he said. He said he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Rewards God's presence, the favor of God. The Bible says, for whoso findeth me findeth light. I'm talking about wisdom, but wisdom will reveal visions to you, right? So all this is all connected. It says, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. The favor of the Lord comes through seekers. There's a saying or was a saying, favor ain't fair. It is fair because I put in the time of waiting and watching. <laughs> oh, just doesn't fall on just anybody. No, there's, there's some conditions to this. Jesus, the favor of the Lord is upon us. Oh, Jesus. We will be daily seekers. I'm just speaking life right now. We'll be daily watchers, daily seekers, and we shall obtain favor of the Lord. We should do great exploits for the Lord. The Lord is with us in all of our endeavors. The Lord is propelling us. The Lord is, is anchoring us. He's anchoring us because we have sought and sat in the counsel of the Lord. Stand in the counsel of the Lord. Your vision will give you counsel. Your vision will give you instruction and clarity. We need it. We need it. Sure. So we know what to receive. We know what to reject. I just had a dream this morning. A person gave me a beautiful, beautiful, they made this cake and gave it to like the here go. I said, not right now. That's wisdom. That's what that cake look good. It was like, I baked this cake for you. So not right now. That's wisdom. We have to know, see, your vision will speak to you so, no, that's not part. That, that opportunity, that gift, that purchase did not come from God. It's a setup. So God wants us to be able to make the right connections, the right decisions. And it comes through waiting and seeking the Lord. So, Father, I thank you for these words today. I thank you, Lord, for every hearer. Blessed is he that heareth me. That's the word of God, that they are blessed because they hear, they're blessed because they're waiters, they're blessed because they're watchers. Help us to wait, Holy Spirit. Help us to wait. Help us to wait on you daily, on you continuously. We thank you and praise your name. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. So I encourage each and every one of you because we are praying, I'm sorry, doing these teachings on vision. God is revealing visions. I encourage you to take time to write your vision and wait to see what he will say to you. Marvelous are his works unto you. Marvelous things he wants to reveal to us, to his children. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, for the great things, 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 the great things that the Lord wants to do through us and give us for his glory. Ah, God, I thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Lord, I thank you for hearing ears today. And I thank you, Lord, that they won't only be hearers, but they'll be doers of the word.
in Jesus' name. Because in the Bible, if you read in James, it talks about a hearer only, you will be deceived. But when you are a doer, you will be blessed. We want the blessings of the Lord. Oh, Jesus. Glory to God. So, um, Father, I just thank you for those that will watch the replay, Father, those that don't know you. I'm going to go over Romans 10, 9 and 10. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So, Father, I thank you that those that don't know you, Lord God, I thank you, Lord, as, as they repeat after me that they want to be saved, that they want to have eternal life with you, that they want to uh, fulfill the purpose and the vision that you have given unto them so that so i confess with my mouth that that jesus is lord and that god raised him from the dead and i am saved amen 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 i just want to take this time also to thank those of you who have been supporting the ministry financially even though we are virtual ministry we have great works to do and in the process of securing a space y'all know that takes finances that takes money so i want to thank each and every one of you that are deciding those of you that have connected to the ministry and that are faithful tithers, those of you that are not, that are not joined to the ministry, but you support the ministry, that you come on when you can, that you come on each week and you still sow. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the blessings. I thank you for the financial, Lord God, those that give what they can. There's no mount too big, too small, God. I thank you for every cheerful giver in the name of Jesus, Father. And I thank you that you will return on to some of them 30, 60, 100 fold in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I would just want to give each and every one of you an opportunity to um, sow into the ministry. Um, so you all know where the link is. I pray you can see it. Um, MIT Deborah, is it up? Is it up? Okay, great. Thank you. If you'd like to donate, you can um, go through PayPal or a debit or a credit card. There's a website right up there. Um, that's an acronym for New Birth Global Prayer Ministries, nbgpm.org backslash donation. Or if you want to write a check, you can send it to PO Box 558, Bowie, Maryland, 20718. You would write the check out to New Birth Global Prayer Ministries. So Father, I thank you for the cheer for givers. Father, I thank you for those that are sowing, those that have sowed. Oh, Father, I thank you that you said that you will rebuke the devourer for, you, you will rebuke the devourer on their sake, oh God. Father, you said that you will pour out, you will, you will open up the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing that they don't have room enough to receive it, oh Father. So I just thank you and praise you and give you glory, honor and praise, oh God, for moving upon their hearts to give unto New Birth Global Prayer Ministries, oh Father. I thank you for them. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We do pray. Amen. So God bless you all. Thank you for joining us on again on today. Um, I'm going to turn it over to MIT Deborah, and she's going to close us out in prayer. I just want you all to be very encouraged. I just want to say this, um, MIT Deborah, before um, I close out. I just really want to encourage you all here that God cares about you. Really, God cares about you and God has something to say about you. God wants to communicate with you. God wants to show you great and mighty things. Sit before him. I want to tell you, I don't care if you go and say, well, God, you didn't say nothing. That's why it said daily waiting at the doors, daily waiting at the boat. Don't let time, never let time be a discouragement of you not hearing and seeing. Trust me, trust me, because it could be the very thing that the enemy is working against you so that you cannot see in here because he knows the word. If they wait, they're going to see. So let me distract them. Let me keep them busy. Let me divert their attention. It can be a trick of the enemy. So it's a promise. You seek, you will find. 
So don't let time discourage you. God loves you. He has a great and an awesome plan for you that was foreordained before the foundation of the world. And you want to know, I want to know everything that God says about me. Because God Bible says that his thoughts towards us are more in number than the number of sand. That's in um, Psalms 139. His thoughts towards us are precious. They're valuable. So I want to know what is God saying about me? Because sometimes I don't have good thoughts to say about myself. Oh, but God, he says, my thoughts towards you are precious. He says, they're far. They're precious, like rubies. You're near and dear to God, and he loves you, and he loves you unconditionally. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. We just thank Prophetess Carrie for that powerful word that she brought forward to us. I just thank you for each and every one of you on the line who came to hear the word. But I do beseech you not to just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. So in closing, Father God, I just thank you for the people who have come to hear and do what you have said today through the message that was given to us, Lord God. Let it not be put up on the shelf but let it, us use it, Lord God. Let us apply this word that Prophetess Carrie has brought forth from you to go and do what you have told us to do, Father God, to write the vision. So I just pray for grace over the people today, Father God, to wait upon you, to wait upon you daily, Father God. I just ask you, Father God, to give them the wisdom as they seek you, Lord God, for the vision, and as they seek you to ask you about the vision, Lord God, what it is for them to do, what it is for them to apply it, how they must apply it, Lord God. Let them write the vision as Habakkuk said, write the vision, write the vision. Even if you don't have the full vision, just start to write, write, write. I pray, Lord God, that they will start to write even while we're talking, even as I'm praying this close out prayer, Lord God, let them just write the first sentence, write the first word, start to write, 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 write. And I thank you, Father God, for giving them the grace to write, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for giving them the grace to apply the vision. Thank you, Father God, for just peace in their life, Lord God, as they write the vision, that they will start to understand the vision, Father God. I pray peace over them this day, Father God, peace to, peace to carry them out throughout the week, Lord God, until we meet again on the Sunday, Lord God, the Sunday to come and worship you, the Sunday to come and praise you. I thank you, Lord God, for long life over them, Lord God. I thank you for the words that you will impart into their hearts this day and every day do throughout the week, Lord God. I thank you for just giving them the grace to wait upon you, Lord God. And I thank you for the things that you will reveal unto them, Lord God, as they wait, Lord God. Thank you for their hearts, Lord God. Thank you for the hunger and the thirst over that you have imparted into them, Lord God, and that they will become seekers because as seekers, they will be finders, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for grace, grace and mercy, Lord God. This day you have given us mercy. Every day you have given us your mercy. Let us seek the mercy of God in the name of Jesus, I pray over each and every one of you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Go forward and do God's bidding. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen to that, amen. God bless you all. Bye-bye. God bless you all.